what would happen in Washington if we were to have a voice, if we were to hear a voice from our president and said, we're going to have a national day of fasting and prayer and humbling ourselves and calling upon God and seeing if God will heal this land. What would happen if we heard this thing? Matthew chapter 17 and verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed... You shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Fasting releases the supernatural power of God into your life. Fasting releases, I want you to hear that, it releases the supernatural power of God into your life. Satan does not mind if you attend church. He doesn't mind if you come to church and you can sing some songs and and you can clap your hands and you can have a good time. You know, all that's great. He doesn't mind if you give a dollar in the offering and leave and say that was a pretty good service. You know, but what he doesn't want, he doesn't want you to discover the power of God in your life that will bring power that is released through prayer and fasting in you to know that power. There is a power that is released. You know, in Philippians 3.19, he makes a comment, Paul writing to the Philippians uh, there, he says in 3.19, whose God is their belly. Whose God is their belly. But you know what? In America today, we have become so sensitive. We eat, well, I started to say we eat everything. (laughs) But we don't eat everything, but we eat nearly everything. And we cook it, and we have cookbooks. The, The Probably the number one book in your house are cookbooks. They really, think about it. They're probably cooked. We eat better Mexican food than the Mexicans. We eat better Chinese food than the Chinese. We are, we are, Becky cooked something new last night, a seafood gumbo, and tried it out on all of us. And it was pretty good. You know, but, Fasting, fasting crucifies king's stomach. It crucifies the flesh. 
It crucifies that thing that is warring the flesh. Paul said, the things that I do, I don't do. And he said, those things that I, I, I would not do, I do. And it crucifies the flesh that we're warring against. You know, Eve was tempted of the forbidden fruit. It, it wasn't a quick thing. She was tempted. She was tempted, I believe, over time. But she gave in. She surrendered. And her, she gave it to her husband. And he ate us out of house and home. He did. I can't wait to get there and give him a big kick in the seat. Because of what he's done. But he ate us out of house and home. He surrendered. And he gave up. You know, there were three sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. There were homosexuality and we preach against it. There was drunkenness. We preach against it. But there was gluttony. Gluttony. Excessive eating. Eating. Living to eat. Not eating to live, but living to eat. Just wanting to eat all the time. Whatever desserts, whatever we can get. You know, Esau sold his birthright for a mess of pottage. He was coming in, and he looked over there and he said, Man, I am starving to death. How, how much do you want for that big pot of pottage you got there and the guy said well give me your birthright your birthright that was something in the old testament but Esau said okay and he sold his birthright for a bowl of pottage uh, manna manna that came every day that was there every time they needed it it was there every day. They could get fresh manna. They could get it real. They could get it uh, alive. And on the sixth day, they had to gather enough for two days because it wouldn't be there on the seventh day. And they gathered it up. But listen to them as they write uh, in Exodus 16. Listen to them. They said, Would they we had died... Would they we had died when we sat by the flesh pots and ate bread to the full? Listen at that. Numbers 11 and 4. He said, remember the fish that we ate in Egypt. They were sitting there dreaming about food. They were sitting there dreaming about something. And then there was another occasion when... They said, well, we don't have any meat to eat. We're just tired of this. And God said, by this time tomorrow, you're going to have all the meat you want. But you know what happened to them? By the time they got it, by the time they got it, the anger of the Lord, and while the meat was still between their teeth, the Lord smote the people. You know, there's a real thing. You know, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, God led Jesus. Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Why? What was He doing in the wilderness? He led Him there for a fast, for a 40-day fast. Fast. Can you imagine he's led into the wilderness? There's no food. There's nothing to buy. He's led, and he's led for a 40-day fast. Satan tried to stop the fast. Satan tried to stop it. First, he said, If you are the Son of God, turn this stone into bread. Just... Hey, if you really are the Son of God, turn the stone into bread. What was he trying to do? Jesus was hungry. The next verse says, and Jesus hungered. He was hungry. 
a 40-day fast and your body, your, your very being is crying out for something to eat. And he comes to Jesus and he says, if you're really the Son of God, turn this into bread. Satan wanted Jesus to yield to the desires of the flesh rather than the call of the Spirit. What was the result? Verse 14, Jesus returned Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and there went out a fame of Him throughout all the region round about. Jesus began a miracle ministry of power when He completed His season of prayer and fasting. You know, Jesus was not powerful because He was born of a virgin. He was powerful because he prayed and he fasted and it became a part of his life and who he was and it became a part of him because he prayed and fasted. Secondly, what is fasting? Doing without food for a time of prayer for a designated time. Doing without food for a designated time for prayer. There's three kinds of fast. There's the normal fast, where you don't eat, uh, you don't uh, eat any food. You drink, but you eat nothing. It's a normal fast. It's a regular fast. Uh, and then there's the second kind of fast, an absolute fast where you eat nor drink nothing. You don't drink anything. Now this you better hear from God before you do this. You better hear from God. You better know that God said this. You better know that he said do this for a certain period of time. And there are many examples in the Bible uh, in uh, Esther. Esther called for a total fast for three days that God would deliver the nation. It was an important thing uh, in Esther. And she called for a fast. Uh, and then there's the partial fast where you can fast one meal. You can fast for a day. You can fast uh, for a moment. You can fast, you can fast a Daniel fast. He ate no dessert and no meat uh, and none of these things. And he only ate the basics. Uh, and you can do that. And I know there's a lot of debate and people say, well, uh, I can eat bread on the Daniel fast. Some say I can't eat bread. Well, you decide what you can eat. But in Daniel, he ate no precious or good tasting uh, desserts or sweet rolls, or any of these types of things. You decide. Some people, a balanced diet is a hamburger in both hands. <laughs> Three square meals will make you round. <laughs> but you know, fasting, why is fasting important? Why is it? I mean, what really makes it important? Fasting is denying the flesh and submitting to God. We're three in one. We're spirit, we're soul, we're body. We are our body. You're your body. You see it. You're your soul. You say, I, me, what I want, your soul. And then there is a spirit component, three in one, the, that makes up the one. What is fasting? What is it? The flesh loves food. The flesh loves sleep. The flesh loves comfort. The flesh loves ease. We can, you know, we don't want to get up early in the morning and go to work, but we have to make ourselves get up early and go to work. That alarm clock goes off. My mama just got a new alarm clock. And she said, that thing's really nice. It just plays the softest music. And it gradually gets... She needs a... You know, no, I don't. I don't. 
you know, I was going to say, she needs an alarm clock that goes bong, 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 like most of us. You know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't go loud, I just sleep right through it. It's got to be loud. But, you know, we love. What are we doing? What are we doing? We're denying the flesh. We're dying to self. We're not controlled by the flesh. When we yield to the Spirit, our Spirit within us connects with the Holy Spirit of God. We begin to downplay the flesh, downplay the food, downplay the comfort, uh, and we let the Spirit that is within us reach up uh, and connect with the Spirit of God, and there becomes a new power. Amen. A new power. When we allow the Spirit within us, Jesus said, if any man would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If any man would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. What is that? Dying, death, surrender. I die. I die daily. I die to myself. I take up my cross and I follow Him. Oh, my friend, if we would ever see, Paul said, I have died to the flesh, yet I live, but not I, but Christ who lives within me. He lives through me. We need to take the flesh off the throne of our life. What did Paul say? Present yourself, your bodies, as a living sacrifice unto the living God as it ought to be. Present yourself uh, days or meals are forever given to God. Fasting is denying self. It's surrendering to God. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to move within you. What is fasting not? It's not a diet. It's not when you said, hey, I remember when I used to look like that. I think I'll fast for a couple of days. Maybe I'll fast for a week. But fasting is not a diet. It's not just an attempt to lose weight. You know, I could go further with that, but fasting is not a diet. It is a surrender to God. Well, third, what are biblical examples of fasting? What are they? Jesus fasted many times. He did. He fasted many times. And he fasted 40 days. He fasted uh, again and again. And then he said something. He said, the works that I do, you shall do also. What are the works that he's doing? He's fasting and praying and getting power for life and for miracles. This is what he's doing. Moses fasted 40 days as well as did Joshua. Paul fasted. God, Paul did an absolute fast when God knocked him off the horse and he was there. And God said, Paul, I want to talk to you. And Paul said, okay, okay, I'm going to talk to you. You know what? When God wants to call your name... And, and you get serious and you say, I'm going to talk to God. There is an answer. Daniel fasted 21 days. All of Israel fasted for three days during the time of Esther. I mentioned it a moment ago. Why? The nation was in grave danger. I mean, in Iran, at this moment, in this time... Much of Israel was in Iran. They had been carried there by 
the, the Persians. And they were there. And Haman, who is an Agagite, anybody know what an Agagite is? An Amalekite? You know what he was? King Agag of the Amalekites? He came up with a plot and he came up with this plan where on a certain day, every single Jew and the entire kingdom that anybody who attacked them or destroyed them could have all of their property and it was perfectly lawful. And it could not be changed. Now wow, what a, what a, what a situation. Every Jew in all the kingdom and they can't change it and, and their property is surrendered up. But you know what Esther said? I want every person in this kingdom to fast with me for three days to save this nation. And she went before the king. And this was important because if the king didn't hold out his scepter, if he didn't hold it out when you came in, you were immediately slain. But when Esther came, he held out the scepter for her. And as she came, oh, let me tell you the rest of the story. Is it okay? I just tell you the rest of the story. He, he holds out the scepter. And she comes to him and she says, he says, what do you want? She says, I want you and Haman to come to a banquet. Haman's over there going, oh, she only wants me and the king to come to the banquet. You know, this is really good. And they come to the banquet. And they're sitting there and he said, Esther, what do you want? She said, I would really like you to come to another banquet tomorrow night. And he said, oh man, another one tomorrow night? And Haman's, well, you know what happens? He gets there and finally he says, you got to tell me what you want. And she said, There's somebody trying to kill me. There's somebody trying. He says, who? Who is trying to kill my wife? And she goes, him? (laughs) And Haman, I'm sure, turns about four colors. And guess what? That same day, Haman was hung on the gallows that he built for Mordecai and his ten sons were hung along with him. And the bottom line is Esther became, she already was the queen. Mordecai became prime minister and the nation of Israel was saved and he made a new proclamation that every Jew that took up weapons and defeated those that came against them could have the property of the attackers. Oh, I want you to know, God's power is real. Let me, let me, let me read for you a little bit, uh, if I can. Our nation, our nation was in danger. It was in grave danger. We, Abraham Lincoln was our president. And he wrote, I can't read the whole thing, but he wrote, he wrote something I'd like to read to you. A call for a national day of prayer. He called the whole nation, everybody together for this day of prayer. And he said, it is the duty of nations as well as of men who owe their dependence upon the overruling power of God to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with the assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proven by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God 
is the Lord. Think about that. The awful calamity of civil war which now desolates the land may be but a punishment inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a people. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God who made us. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has grown, but we have forgotten God. We have forgotten God. We have turned to our own way. What would happen in Washington if we were to have a voice, if we were to hear a voice from our president and said we're going to have a national day of fasting and prayer and humbling ourselves and calling upon God and seeing if God will heal this land. What would happen if we heard this thing? Why is there a North Vietnam? Why is there a North Korea? There is not a North in South America because God heard the prayer of Abraham Lincoln and he did not turn away. Folks, what we need is not more laws, not more gun control, not more federal giveaway. What we need is fasting and prayer and humbling ourselves and laying it all aside and saying, oh God, have mercy upon America. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew 9 and 15. Jesus said, When the bridegroom is gone, then shall ye fast. When the bridegroom is gone, then my people will fast. They will call for me to come back. They will long for my return. They will be looking to heaven. They will be laying all aside. And they will say, even so, come quickly. Lord Jesus, we're calling for you. Oh, my friend, fasting breaks the bonds. It tears down strongholds. It it breaks everything that would hinder Fasting releases the power of God into your life.